Good afternoon, I'm Bradley McAllister, founder of Spirocraft, and here we are with another episode of Spirocraft Live. And it sounds like, looks like, Rich is watching a ball game. Uh, I'm sorry, Rich, but it's good to see you. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Uh, I missed last week, but I'm back. Uh, hopefully my voice doesn't do anything weird today. Uh, I've still been fighting that cold and the crud and a variety of things. But I'm happy to be here, and today we're going to do some beading. We're going to bead some... Maybe I just start over. <laughs> We're going to do some beading, make some nice beads with the new Easywood Tools Carbide Negative Rake Beading Cutter. Cutters. Got all four of them, as a matter of fact. Um, anyway, I got the air on. I can't decide. It was it was 40-something degrees this morning, and now it's hot. I had the heat on a little while ago, then I turned on the air... And at least I got my fan on to try and get things uh, in the right temperature range. And so we're just kind of waiting to see what folks coming in here. Looks like uh, there's a couple on you guys, Rich and Joe, are on YouTube. I have started watching the YouTube um, feed over here, so I don't see the Facebook feed. Um, but if anybody's on Facebook, say hello, and I'll know that it's working on Facebook and all that good stuff. Wow. Uh, these fun little beaters, uh, I went ahead, they come in four sizes, uh, eighth, three sixteenths, three eighths, and quarter. And I took the easy start tools, and I had a bunch of them, and I just added one. Hey, there's a Facebook user. I added one to every, or one of each size to a easy start tool. So now I have a dedicated set of four tools for these cutters so instead of changing cutters which is i hate changing cutters um i mean yeah it, it's cheaper than having a bunch of tools but the easy start tools are uh, very inexpensive from easy wood uh, i think they're like 69 dollars and uh, on spirecraft i have the cutters available individually and i have packs of two uh three packs of two the first two sizes, the two smaller sizes, the middle sizes, and the two larger sizes, and I have a four-pack. And I'm also going to create uh, a bundle, if you will, with a cutter and a tool so that you can have a dedicated tool. And I'll create a bundle of all four tools with four cutters. Uh, I was going to get that last week, but things came up uh, and didn't get to. Still don't have it done. Matter of fact, here's a funny story. So today, <coughs> I went looking for these tools. I was going to come out here and get everything ready. And I couldn't find them, and I thought, well, now where did I put them? I, I knew I had them, and they had been in a box in the office, and I had been taking pictures of them for the website. And I thought I had brought them out here to the studio. I came out, and I looked everywhere, and I looked over in the other shop. I looked in the other storage building. I looked in the vehicles. I looked back in the office again. I went everywhere. And finally, a little light bulb said, go look at the light box which is in another room in the house where I do, you know, still stuff. And sure enough, there they were laying there next to the light box where I had been taking pictures with them right along. But I was starting to think I had lost my mind, you know. Um, so I'm glad I found them. I mean, they were all ready to go, so that was no big deal. A uh, rough guesstimate on what a set will cost. Uh, all loaded up. Actually, I haven't, I don't have one. Um, and don't put me on the spot for that much math in my head uh, live. Um, basically, if you t uh, the handles are like $60 a piece and the cutters are 30 and $31 a piece. So that'd be 90 and take all 10, 15% off of all of that added up somewhere in there, something like that. Maybe like 10% off per tool for a single tool with a cutter and probably 15% off for the whole bundle of four handles with four cutters. Uh, don't hold me to it, but that's, that's the way I would do, that's the model I would follow. That's the true guesstimate. That's, that's the best I can give you uh, today. Um, and I want to do, I want to, I got a piece on here that I was playing with earlier and this wood and I, got, I went out to oh, another warehouse I got stuff scattered all over this place and it was rummaging through boxes of pieces and I brought back a, a crate of stuff and I've got some wood and I've got some resin so I want to play with both of them today 
And uh, this first one that's on here now is actually left over from uh, well, when I did the brown, the, the brown natural dye episode. And if you may remember, we filled a knot hole with epoxy gel resin. And so this is the piece um, that I was doing that with. And that's why when you look here, you see that the end grain's all torn out because I didn't clean it up uh, before anything else uh, today. But I just wanted to work on putting beads on here. And I made a little short video today. And that's, this is the piece I used. I used, did the top here. And I did this front face and played with some beads. And I think we'll use this to start with, again, just for the basic, making uh, the shape and talking about it. And I want to take that blob of resin off of there, too, and see what that looks like. Um, so we'll do that. We'll clean that up. I think that'll be our first little project, just to kind of show the cutters. And I've got, like I say, I've got a variety of things around here that I want to throw on the lathe. And a couple of chunks of resin. They are negative rate. Uh, I have not used them on resin yet. Uh, but I can't imagine why they wouldn't work. Uh, that should all fit right in there. Uh, so I've got, I got an old crazy piece of resin here, and I got another one here that's all kind of out of whack. So who knows what we'll get to there. Um, and then I've got stuff down in my box, and I found this one. This and uh, this is probably green. No, it's actually the green's not coming through the key. Um, this guy is kind of an interesting candidate. Come here. Come here. And I know it's up close there right now. But because I'm zoomed way and it's out of focus, it's already got this ledge on it, if you will. This profile. And I was thinking I would just bead that. I can't get it down far enough. There we go. Uh, to get it in focus. So this n could have a bead rolled over on it. I wasn't ever sure what I was going to do with this guy. So I grabbed it as well uh, to play with. So I got all kinds of different goodies in here. And we'll just have some fun with these beading tools. Uh, as always, if there's questions, holler away. And so I think the first thing I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the beads off of this that I put on it earlier today uh, so we can make them all over again. And I want you to know, even though it's almost getting dirty again, I went and finally washed my jacket. You know? And I started to do something, and I was like, no, I'll start the show with my jacket dirty if I do anything. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't washed it in forever. So let's go ahead and get rid of these beads <coughs> off the top and the face, and then we'll play with that. Maybe we'll get uh, clean this resin off. I kind of want to see what that knot looks like. And then we'll get on with the beading. And, of course, any questions, fire away in the chat column there. So let's jump into the overhead. That would be the first place to start. And I've got a little small round tool post on here today. Don't really need a whole lot of anything. And we'll find some tool hanging around here to clean this up. I changed the uh, Doug, and I, I can't pronounce Doug's. Uh, I want to say it's like Schneider, but it's, it's, it's longer than that. So, Doug, if you're in here, um, well you, I got called out on this gouge today because it was all a mess, and it's in the video, that little short 60-second video. So I did clean it up a little bit. I was I was hand sharpening without a platform, and it was a mess. But let's see if it cuts now. So I just want to clean this up. Get rid of the beads that I had made. And come around here to the front. And clean those up. Or cut them off, quite honestly. Just take them off of there. We'll cut them off so we can put them back on. And I want to cut that resin off, so I'm going to switch to a carbide negative rate cutter for a minute. Back over here in the overhead.
and cut that resin that tool almost looked bent I can't imagine that I would have bent a tool How, you ever met can you imagine me bending a tool I don't think so I'm gonna bump this thing up to a uh, thousand twenty I love the push button ease of the nebula This is mostly for my curiosity. I want to see how well this knot looks after we filled it with the epoxy resin. And we could bead this whole thing if we were so inclined. I think this is a piece of sycamore. So that's pretty cool. I'll p turn it around here because I've got you zoomed way in. So that's the resin, and it's got a nice knot color to it. Now, it doesn't have any texture to it like a knot might. Um, we'll clean that up a little bit more. You know what might be interesting to do here for fun would be to bead down through here, through the resin and through the wood and all that. I think I'm going to flatten this back out some more as well. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So we'll just cut some more of this away. Give us a little more surface area to work with. Okay. Clean the front face back up real quick. And then we'll grab we'll go back to our beading tools. Okay, keep that one handy. We're still in the overhead. So let's bead this big flat space first with the largest one, which is the quarter inch. So that looks, that's just about the full size of that. Let me get the dust out of there. So that's almost a perfect quarter inch section to be beaded. All right, and I'm going to turn this back down to about 750. I'm up at 1020. I think I'll go back to 750 for the beating. Uh, pretty close to center. And these again are just a straight in, straight in and go. And so on the on the top there, you can see the, the nice super clean bead it made if we punch to the front side. Again, I'm a little bit far away, um, but you get the idea there. Okay. And I may try something fun. I may try and come over here after a little bit and uh, and and bead the whole come uh, whole top be that whole thing and since we're here and we're gonna do what I was thinking about I want to try this this thing is plenty thick all right um, back over here it's it's plenty thick to bead all the way down through here okay and I had this thought the last week I was gonna do is a different 
just for fun you know I'm just having fun out here do each size uh, graduating down just to see what the profile looked like so I think that's what we'll do here today I think I'm gonna keep my airbrush handy or my air sawdust blower handy because it makes it easier for you to see if I can keep all the sawdust out of the way all right fire this guy back up and now I have to think about the angle here because I don't want to really cut into my other bead too much because it was on a different a different profile or a different angle And once we, once we reach where we've cut a full round, then we're good. So you start to see why I like this idea of having, uh, in this case, especially cutters on a dedicated tool. No need to change cutters if you want to do something goofy like I'm doing here. So the first one was a quarter, and it's really hard to read on here. Um... Well, the first one actually was the three-eighths, and then the quarter, and this is the three-sixteenths. And you can see how easy it is. I mean, there's like nothing to it. And if you're a basket weave illusion type of person... Like Doug, who hollered, or didn't holler at me, but laughed at my gouge, and I laughed with him. Um, you know, this is the same uh, same type of tool that you can do for for making your basket weave illusions. And so, what I'm going to do, just for fun, is I'm going to take and go back up the size range now. Like I said, I just like to have fun out here. These are super simple to use. Knowing me, I'll get them confused here. So I just line the right, the right tang up, if you will, with the last hole. Now leave it to me to make multiple sizes on the same piece. So the one thing I notice here doing this, and I don't know if you can see it, let me blow the chips away. So when I do this, it starts to get bigger again. The, the, the bowl profile is, is actually getting a, a swoop in it because it was going down smaller and smaller. Now it got bigger. Now, I'm not trying to teach a design class here or anything today, but I, you know the question is, do we let it go flare back out or do we push this in um, to keep it on track? So I'm going to make the last cut and then we'll, we'll think about that. Rich says, any, any mistakes can be blamed in Michael since he's not here today. That's true. I wonder where Michael is. I hope he's doing all right. He probably decided he'd wait and see if I actually was going to show up today. And again, these are just sitting flat on the tool rest. I mean, that's about as easy as it gets. You know, the, the only other beading tool I have is a, is a D-Way with no handle on it. Um, it also, speaking of my question about the resin, it goes right through the resin just fine. <coughs> Excuse my cough. And I never felt a difference as far as the cutter um, cutting the resin or the wood going by. Didn't really notice any kind of difference. So we went down the scale... 
and I didn't double up the smallest one and then we started to back up the scale and there's a little shadow there is all and so theoretically I could either keep going or keep changing I think I'm gonna go back down to scale and see how close I'm gonna go as close to the jaws as I can get like I said, I'm just having fun here today Because the beauty of all this is I've got a bowl gouge and I can just turn all this away. Now if I'm lucky, if I'm living right, I'll, I'll end up right down at the bottom and have used up all the wood. So I got a little bit to the left too much there, and I had a little line, but that'll cut away there, okay? And then down to the smallest one. I recommend, I don't have a, uh, change here, I don't have an overhead light. Uh, in here anything you do I've got a little shadow coming from over here it is a little hard to see this really small cutter so if you're going to use these a lot uh, would put your light in place whatever uh, flex light you want to use to get yourself some more light And then I think I could just make myself a little flat. Nice crack in the voice there. Just to finish that off. Coming right into the all the way into the bottom of that groove. That last bead. Do whatever, whatever, whatever. All right. So there's there's all the profiles repeated several times. Now, just for yucks, I should throw some dye on there, but I'm like I'll do that later. Let's move around to the front side and see what kind of fun we can have up here. And I'm going to run into the control room and see if I can get us a little closer without the jigglies coming in on the end camera here. Let's see what we can do. That's as close as I can get. Okay, all right. And we'll see where that focus is at. Probably focused on the tool rest there, but I think that's okay. So that's the close I get. I'm happy that at the moment that end camera, it's been unplugged. I've learned that if I keep it unplugged, it doesn't get the jiggles nearly as much. Think you could make captive ring with these? Um, you could, without a doubt. Pop up here for a second. You could, without a doubt, at least start the process, Rich. There's Michael. We've been talking about it behind his back. Uh, <laughs> hey, Michael, it was Bridget's birthday. Um, I was just the chauffeur and... Well, actually, she picked the restaurant, but I was the chauffeur, and we had a wonderful time last night down in Savannah. Yeah, we're still gonna we're still gonna blame him. So, Michael, Rich, I wasn't talking about you, Michael, but Rich was talking all about you while you were gone. Um, uh, so, to answer your question, Rich, could you could you make a complete captive ring with it? I don't 
think so, not in any reasonable fashion, but you could start the process because I don't think you'd ever get the tool all the way around, if you know what I'm saying. Jeff, it's your wife's birthday today. We've got birthdays going on all over the place. All right, so let's see what we want to do with this guy. We'll figure something out here. I'll pop you back over into the end camera now that we've got that. So we've got, the, and I was talking about rolling that bead all the way around, wasn't I? So here's what I'm going to do. We, that's the big quarter inch. Excuse me, three eighths. That's the big three eighths. And what I think I'll do is I want to roll. I want to see where that's going to be and make a cut. And then I'll take a gouge and take some of that away. I haven't tried this particular maneuver before, but as you guys know, that's nothing new for me. And I'm going to move these other tools over here because I'm going to lean up against this. So you can see how you know I, it shows me what, where I need to get rid of the material. And I'll turn this off for a second. Now I've got a little, a little double line right over here, just from kind of playing with this, right up in here as I came around the corner. I'm to make that second cut. This left tip uh, touched right in here and made a little line. Now that's that would sand out, you know, easily. So the question, you know, what I'm after is how, f how much of this can I roll around here and without making a mess? <coughs> Sorry again for the cough. All right, so the best shot for that is going to be back to the end. Again, I'm just using a little teeny, uh, and I'm using a round tool rest that I cleaned up real nice. So, you know, I'm sure I'll find the place where these will catch. But if you're after that perfect radius up in there, get rid of some more of this. So I just go into the line. I'm actually looking over at the other side. Hopefully my shoulder's not in the way. Okay, so we we're able to to roll a bead, if you will, for lack of a better term, with the carbide cutter, all the all the way around this guy. Pop into the overhead. From, from back here and all the way around to the inside. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You know, we're, that's straight in. And we've gone to, to that far. It looks like about, I'd just ballpark it at 45 degrees. Um, and then you could go ahead and go on down and, and, and hollow out your, take out the center of your bowl. Um, so pretty cool, pretty easy to do. Like I said, you do see, you know, just a byproduct of the action, a little bit of a tip when the tip touched, but that would easily sand off of there, you know. So pretty versatile uh, in what you can do with them. All right, so let me see here. I'm going to pop back up, up top here. That's about all I can mess with with that guy uh, in its world. There's not much more to bead. Uh, to it on it 
So let's come up with another little something here. I don't have the one thing. I have a big platter over here, but I'm certain it's not flat enough to be like it was going to be um, one of the, a large basket weave. This is from a while back, and it's it's yeah, it's all whacked out. It's super thin. It's super super thin. Um, but that would be if that was flat. That would be a good project. Uh, let's see about this crazy piece of resin right here. This should go in these jaws. Should being the operative word. This is one that's been around for a long time. Might need a little cleaning up. But I think that'll do the trick. So, Michael, you're on vacation. I'm, I'm trying to read up, back up through there a little bit. Just boarded the ferry, headed for Port Angeles. Well, good for you. I'm glad you're getting a, t a break. You'll be all rested up for another trip come AAW time in the first weekend in June. Working on the arrangements for that here just last, last week. All right, let's... This is a crazy uh, hybrid piece that it's hybrid, but the wood is not stabilized. And I can see that I need to go in and do a little work in the control room here. So bear with me for a minute. And we'll make an adjustment for this since it's not a bowl. Oh, come on, come on, come on, do it. You can do it, you can do it. There we go. Nope, wrong one, Brad. We'll just have to leave it at that. Okay. And I can move the headstock to... Uh, Shift it and the end camera while well, let's check it out while we're here. All right, that looks that looks all right. We can see goodies from there, so we won't change anything on that. Okay, and I can just slide the headstock a little bit if I want to get the whole whole piece in the in the picture here. Yeah, Michael, it should be fun. And that way we can abuse Rich in person. And since he can't leave, because he has like a boss, he has to be responsible. We can really, we can really poke at him. <laughs> Jeff, we're talking about AAW uh, Symposium, the AAW's annual symposium in the first weekend in June. In Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and this is the first one. I don't know if you guys, uh, Michael and, and Rich, have noticed that there's no hotel connected to the venue. You have to get one down the road a little bit. Maybe not too far, but you can't just walk. You don't have the convenience this time. The first time ever I've seen this. Uh, you don't have the convenience of just like walking in the crossover bridge and jumping in there. Um, okay, so let's play with this little piece of resin a little bit. I'll pop you back in the overhead. And I'll do a little cleanup on it just to get it trued up around with a negative rate cutter. So I'm going to jump back up to 1,020 and clean this guy up. This is a weird project I started a long time ago. And I still don't know what I'm really going to do with it. It's got two pieces of wood down in it.
probably not going to do anything up in here anyway. I think I'm just going to concentrate down in this lower end. You get a round cutter here. Do I have a round negative? Yes. So what I'm going to do is just flatten this out. So that we can then cut a bead in the resin. And this section is out here. This is pure resin. Well, there's wood right there. So we will get a mixture. This is a really cool piece of uh, resin. I can't wait to finish it out one day. Um, I'm going to pop you in the end here just real quick. This is a piece of wood, and this is a resin blank that had, this is a, a wood blank that had a hole in it that I filled with resin. So there's resin and then wood um, in that part, and then this is all wood on this side. And this is when we, I was working, we were working, uh, Chromocraft was working on getting the water clear. And this is a water, this was a test sample of water clear, but it wasn't right yet, and it cracked. Um, so I've never done a lot with this, and it obviously wasn't water clear. All right, um, let me make someday easy wood tools, especially if you're listening, anybody from the home office or the Texas office, make a square, true square negative rate cutter. Oh, I forgot to put you guys in the overhead. My bad. Okay. Enough of that for the moment. We'll start with the big one. Now, no, let's not. That, that's going to eat up half of the uh, half the space. Let's make a couple small ones in here. We'll go with the smallest one, the eighth inch. I am on the right camera now, yes. Well, that was about easy. It's about the easiest bead you've ever made. I'll make two of them. Joe, where's my brush? So you can see uh, that little line right there. I was a little too far to the left. So that's something to keep in mind. You want to make sure. And I probably happened is I couldn't see it because of the strands. See how I almost made that mistake? I don't know what would happen if you turned it upside down like that. So the big difference between wood and resin is that the resin leaves the all the strands flopping in the breeze and it, it hides the tip of the tool. So that's something to keep in mind. when you're working with resin. It's really easy for it to hide what's going on. Let's see if we can't clean that up. That's that one. All 
I must have made two of those. I did. So it's super easy in resin. The, I say the the only thing I'm noticing is that when all the strings are hanging around the tool, uh, it's hard to see your cut line. Okay. So that cuts super clean. It cuts through the wood really nice and clean. Uh, again, I don't know what this wood was. I'm certain it's not stabilized. He says, but he's not sure. It's been a long time. Um. But that's a nice, really smooth. I wish you could feel that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't sand that. I'd start to polish that guy right there, as smooth as that is. Now these cutters are, you know, brand, brand, brand spanking new. Um, this is a really. I mean, I I used them this morning uh, for the first time to make that little video. So that works great in the resin. And then that's just a byproduct there. We're not going to worry about that. So super easy to do that in resin. Okay, so let's uh, pop up here, and we'll make another change. That worked easy. Uh, that was easier than I thought. Yeah, no, no must, no fuss. So any kind of resin project, I'm not going to go up here to the top of this thing because it's all kind of crazy, and I don't want to take too much of this because I don't know what I want to do with it. I kind of want to save it. Um, but it definitely turned, they definitely cut resin really nice and easy and smooth and clean. So if you've got resin projects and you want to add a bead to them, by all means, these easy wood tools, negative rate carbide beading cutters are a good way to go. I want to throw this little guy in here and bead this little flange. And it looks like the cameras are going to work right where they're at. Well, that's quite the trip. Plane, train, and automobile. Are you going to work any horse in there? Any horse or donkey, mule, llama... Pack burrow, anything like that, Michael? Any other forms of transportation? Uh, the, just for fun, don't use fossil fuels. I couldn't help it. I had to go there. Uh, let's see how true this guy is. I think I'll take her down to 750. You can see with the nebula, I just punch a button, and I know exactly where I'm going with the speed. That's, that's true enough for what we want to do. All right, so I'm going to punch you into, not change speed, change cameras, overhead for that. Put my mask on. And so what I'm going to do here is kind of size up. I'm going to look at this and see, is that too big? I'm probably right in between. We'll find out here in a second. So that was a, a, a size smaller would have been too small and a size bigger would have been too big. Okay, and we just got a little bit of uh, cleanup we'll have to do. You can see that little teeny, teeny flange right there. But that's a nice, nice bead right around there. I'm going to cut that a little deeper. Uh, to roll around the corner here and so I'm actually going to roll that just a little bit towards the top just to finish that profile and then I'll come around here and do the same thing for the bottom now I don't have a left hand camera in place but I can see it cutting away the dark wood back in here. And that makes, that's like a perfect, perfect beaded profile on a flange of a piece. That's, this is what I really wanted to try. So if you're making a piece that has a flange on it like this, that sticks out, and you want to roll it over, 
uh, that cutter was just about the easiest thing in the world to do that with. And I, I did actually rotate it just a little bit and put you back in overhead. And you can't quite see that in the overhead, can you? Well, that stinks. I, um, you missed all that. Well, I'm going to move that camera so that you can see that. And I'll just kind of do it again. I didn't know that you were missing, missing out on that. So let's fix that. That is my bad. And then I'll blow the dust out of the way. There. I wish I had known that. I didn't pay any attention. I'm slack. Try to grab the right one. Okay, there we go. So now you can start. To, you can see the cutter. So what I did at first, I'll just I'll just do it all over again. I just went straight in to the square, and I had a little bit of a flange on the left, and I wanted to roll it around to the right. So first I went to the right or the top, and you'll just see the tool rolling to the right. Okay, and that, that rolled my bead around without uh, cutting into the top. And then I went the other way. Now you could cut this around till it undercut if you were so inclined. And if you m don't pay attention, you'll make an extra groove in it. So I'm kind of undercutting the bottom here a little bit. This would be rich. This would be your captive ring. Um, so theoretically, you might be able to do that. I want to get rid of this groove that I accidentally let a, a tip touch right there. Okay. And so now I have that perfect bead rolled over that. Um, I do have, that's an old something. That's from the original make of this thing. There's a, there's a little bit of funkiness up here on the rim, right in here. So let's take a bowl gouge just for fun and clean that up. Make that cut, and then I just roll it up to the tip and come up against my color piece, my color area there. Okay. This, I think this is sycamore. Look, sure looks like sycamore. And so what I have now, let me get down here where you can see, I've got kind of like a little recess. It rolls all the way around. I'm trying not to hit my color. And then on the back side here, We'll go back to the overhead, Which, and you won't be able to see the back side, but we'll clean it up just a little bit as well. And this is the Carter and Son 3 8 uh, ball gouge that I'm working with there. And that makes a, a does a fine job. Just super easy to make that that bead it over rolled over with just a push push of a cutter, push of a tool. Real real easy. 
So that, that one is ready to go back in the box and wait for another couple of years for me to think about what I might want to do with it. Any kind of questions out there? I mean, this is really, these make it super, super simple to, uh, to put a bead or multiple beads on anything you want to. I'll pop this in the overhead and try and get it where it will be in focus. So you can see, uh, you can see the little moat there, if you will, or the little recess depression there going in around. And then on the back side, uh, cleaned right up, rolls right around real nice. All right. Cool deal. All right, so what else we got to play with? It has a tenon on it. This is a piece that is stabilized, hybrid, um, in color, and I'm zoomed in super tight. So let's pop you on the five over the end. That bead that I made on the top, I actually made this with a round cutter to make the recess, and it kind of made a bead by nature. Um, let's let's take the biggest one. I mean, it's I know the quarter inch or the three eighths is going to uh, be smaller than this whole rim, but let's let's uh, let's play with this for a little bit. See how it does because on your stabilized wood. Stabilizing resin is definitely harder than just the casting resin. And I don't know if I dyed this thing or if it's, I don't, I don't know what I did. I made this years ago now. All right, so you can see the end pretty good. Let's see what the overhead looks like for you. Okay, that's not bad. You can see that as well. All right, so I'm thinking about using... The biggest cutter, the three eighths, to make, and you can just see it right there, and and that's as far as I can get the camera to move. So let's improve this, the roll of this bead with this carbide negative rate cutter. On stabilized and cast, because um, here in the top, this is all, this is all casting here. And I know this wood I stabilized from the pile out back. <sighs> Pop back down to 750. And let's just see what happens here. So I'll leave it in the overhead to start. All right, and so we'll do something with this. You can see I did dye this. As you can see it coming away here, you can see the wood being clear. Oh, no, you can't. Let me turn there. There you can see the wood being clear. Okay, so I'll leave it in the front camera now, or the end camera, excuse me. And I'll continue to make this bead, which I've got that resin to tell me when it's all gone. When all the resin is gone, I know I've got my bead. Now, like I said, this is got a big space of resin and then the wood. And right there, it's kind of punky, or it's got some some air in it. Put you in overhead. I don't know if you notice the tool kind of grabbed me a little bit right. I think it's right here. That might not be super hard. Um, 
So I've got, and this has been sitting for a while, so you can see that it's it's cut here, a little teeny stripe right there that's not cutting, and then it's cutting nice and clean. I mean, it's a nice clean cut, and then the stripe comes back again. So this thing actually did move a little bit over time. I'm actually going to turn the speed up to a thousand with this. Let's see if it does doesn't catch quite like it was on that one little spot. And it might be that right hand horn catching too because now I've got material, if you can see this, I've got material touching on the outside here as well, which, I mean, not a lot, but, but some. Let's go ahead and push this little lip, lip away. That might be giving us an issue, so we'll take that little lip away. There's my round cutter over there. And we're in overhead. Let me pop you here. And we'll clean this little lip off of here. Okay, so that may help with the pushing in of the cutter here. It'll allow it just to cut right into there. You see this corner? Because before we had material out here rubbing on the outside as well. So that, that uh, cutter prong, if you will, was sandwiched. And you saw it, you know, kind of jump there a couple times. And I'm betting that's what was going on. Didn't feel uh, grabby at all then. Okay, and that's got a nice looking face to it. And we can clean it up any way we want. As you can see, this is all wood. Stabilized wood. This is all just cast resin right in through here. So it's a hybrid piece. The cutter, I can't tell the difference. Again, with the wood being stabilized, it's, it's basically uh, wood and resin together, so it's not going to be an issue. Okay, and then we can just clean this up. There's a line right there you can see. Clean that up any way you want to. And then just feather that in where I made that clean up. So super easy, that works well. And then, so now I can dye this a different color. I can maybe dye this black or something. Put a black rim on it. So that was a, a true hybrid piece and I wanted to test that. And it passed the test, it worked well. They worked well on that. How are we doing on time? 2.08. Okay. Let's see what else we can play with. We'll take this out. So we've done regular wood, just nothing special. I don't even know what it is. Looks like a piece of sycamore. Works great. Uh, not particularly torn out or anything like that. Uh, pure hybrid, cast resin, stabilized wood, works great. No, no issue there.
uh, straight resin on this piece. We did a, a number of beads, real clean and easy. I say they're a winner. They are super, super easy. Oh, and we did this guy and rounded, beaded that over with, with no muss, no fuss. Um, I don't have, I was thinking about a holoform. I've got a couple in here, but they're, they got cracks in them. Um, how you could add a bead to a holoform. I was going to show you that. If I, I got one here, it's got a crack in it. It probably would blow up. Uh, I've got another one over there that has a crack in it. would probably blow up. I've got another one over there that I don't want to put a bead in. So I guess, I guess we're kind of done with the beads on, or we don't have a holoform. This is God knows what. Looks like a punky piece of spalted sycamore. Let's see if we can have a little fun with it. If we can grab it with this, these jaws. May have to change jaws, may not. I don't know what I was making. Who knows? Some weird shape. And those jaws are not going to grab it. And the others are too small. I wonder what truck I was using. Probably the supernova that's over there on something else. But I'm curious to see this spalted looks like sycamore. It's gonna be really soft and and punky. So let's grab it and see how it cuts. We know they work great on hard pieces. So now the question is, how do I get this jaw out? Maybe somebody needs to clean their chuck. I don't know. I don't know why that would be messy on me. I've never sprayed lacquer around my chuck or anything like that. We'll grab this from the small end and see if we have to bring a tailstock up here or not. And if that small end doesn't have too much crown and I look at it now, it should be okay. We'll find out here in a second. Let's see what we get. This is not the perfect tenon. It's not even a tenon. It's just a shape on the end here. This may be a disaster waiting to happen. It gets worse. So I'm between jaw sizes on easy wood. That's not good to grab. I guess I could expand it all the way out. And we'll do that and make it work. Yeah, that'll work. There's always a way. You just got to keep playing with it until you get where you want to be. Yeah, I can feel this is really soft because I can, I can feel the the wood just crushing in from the jaws. Again, this is just a nothing that I dyed orange. So we'll bead these sharp edges over and see how it does on a really soft piece of wood. And then we may just wrap it up for our early lunch. These things work so well and so quick and easy. I guess that's why they're called easy wood tools, huh? All right, I'm going to leave it up at 1020 because this wood is soft. And we'll start out for fun with a really small cutter. And then we'll just go down through here. a little, uh, the end grain is a little rough, but again, this stuff is, is like super soft. So I'm impressed that, it, you know, it doesn't come off in chunks.
not too bad. Again, you can feel a little bit in the end grain, not, not to be unexpected. Doo -doo -doo. Next size up. Don't let Mr. Dixon see that. What the end grain being a little lip. Hey, I'm in, I'm impressed that they're doing what they're doing. This, this thing is really soft. It's got a big crack in it too. I only turn the finest of woods, as you guys know. And so this is the, the 3 eighths, the largest cutter. And I'm just rocking it back and forth a little bit just for fun. So Rich, when you get your full set, I want to see your captive ring that you've made. All right, and then we could just clean that up. It's, I mean, it's kind of cool looking here in its own way. Not that one. Let's take this little guy. Pop you in the end, you'll see, just clean it up. There's a line right here from the cut with the cutter. We just pick it up right there at that line. We can go up there and bead that top one too. Again, this stuff is super soft. It's kind of cool how the orange, some of the orange is still down in there, for what it's worth. Um, let's let's beat this little guy right here just for just for yucks. Well, I guess I should clean that up while I'm here. We'll pop into the overhead, and you can watch me in this. And not that good. The detailed spindle gouge. So I just picked up where the, the line was there again. It's just like a marshmallow. Anyway, and that's all nice and happy and rounded over and smooth. Oh, you got a lathe back in your shop after a year and a half. I've been wondering what uh, the deal was there. <laughs> Stuff been sitting in your office. I realized, um, Rich, so you don't feel quite so bad. Uh, the pecan tree logs and limbs from last, well, I didn't realize it was last year, when I had my trees trimmed in the spring, and the 
the memory came up on Facebook and it said March 7th, 2022. And I was like, holy cow, those logs have been laying in my yard for a year. Where did the year go? I was going to cut them up. I'm still going to cut them up. I have to cut them up. But, um, boy, that year sure got away from me. So we're up here. Just a beading fool. Don't you touch that, Rich. Having fun here. Again, Carter and Son little detail gouge. Detail spindle gouge. Could make a snowman out of this guy. All right. Oop, get back over here. So, these these new cutters, and again, there's the four sizes, and I've got them mounted. These new. It's such a long, it's such a long name. I was working on them on the website. Like, hey, this is a long title. Easy Wood Tools Carbide Negative Rake Beating Cutters in four sizes, eighth, three sixteenths, quarter, and three eighths work great. I mean, super easy. And again, what I did here is I mounted them on the Easy Wood Easy Start tool. Um, as they, they work on anything that takes a CI2. And this seems like a great way to go to me. And I am going to put this bundle into the website. Um, either just as a single tool with a cutter um, and so I'll just make it available for all the four sizes and then I'll make it a, a kit of four so that you could be set up just like this because you see how easy that was I didn't change a cutter I changed sizes a bunch of times boom 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 super easy for about the price of a nice dinner I just was there um, you could be into a set of tools like that so it was pretty cool. Any kind of questions? Uh, because I'll probably wrap this up. Um, my year went to MBA classes and bathroom renovation. That'll do it. So good thing you got a job, Rich, <laughs> between, <sc> <laughs> between paying for school and bathroom renovations. Good thing you work for uh, a nice large company that takes care of you. Um, but, yeah, these things are great. Uh, if you need to be, that's the, and the beauty of like putting them on a uh, dedicated tool, I would lose the cutters. All right, I, I'm telling you, I would lose the cutters over there in the 13 drawer toolbox. I would I, even if I put them exactly where they're supposed to be, I'd lose them. Uh, shoot, I lost the tools in the house, right? Uh, which isn't saying much for me, but keep them if you put them on a dedicated tool handle, you know, you're good to go. You don't need a lot of handle because it's not like you're working any big leveraged type of format. So just a nice, small, simple handle is all you really need. Okay, good deal. I hope that you picked up some tips on working with these cutters. Um, jump in there on the website if you need some. We'll get them in. Uh, I, I went through the first batch. I've got going to get more. We've got to get more ordered up. Um, they come real quick. But I bought, a, I bought a whole batch of them, a bunch of them, and when the introduction came out, and boom, everything got cleaned out. I mean, I've got a few. I'm not completely out, but I'm close. But I'll be ordering more. So if you're interested, um, and if you're interested in the the package of, of uh, tools, and you don't see it yet, just give me a day or two. I got a bunch of stuff I got to run off and do tomorrow again. Been kind of a crazy couple of weeks trying to get other things done. Um, but they'll be on the site soon. And I had a great time. I hope you did too out here. Is there anything else on the column? Looks pretty quiet. Okay, I think we're going to wrap this one up nice and short today, 218, so about an hour and 20 minutes. And enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Friday and then your weekend. 
And I'll be back next week. I'll come up with a good fun project. Uh, gosh knows what I'll be doing. Um, hopefully I don't miss anything like I did last week. I couldn't avoid that, and I'm uh, sorry about that. But I will be back next week. We'll have fun. If, as always, if you've got questions about anything you see that I do, that I use, anything with Spirocraft, you just give me a holler and let me know, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. You're welcome. I can't, uh, so far, i got to fix that monitor. I can't hardly read those the lines anymore. Um, you're welcome, gang. Appreciate it. I am going to hit preview six, program six, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>